Welcome to part four of Godot 101. In this video, we will be talking about taking a scene that you have created and showing you how to instance it or create multiple instances of it. As always, if you haven't watched the previous videos, please go back and do that before watching this one because we are building on the things we've made before. All right, let's get started. Okay, here's our bouncing sprite and it's all working well. But now the question is, what if we want to make a bunch of these? What if I want to spawn multiple of these sprites and have them all bouncing around the screen? Well, you might think you could go over here and just duplicate this node, right? So if I right click on this and say duplicate, oh, now I'm going to get this error and I'll zoom in a bit so you can read it. The problem is that a scene is a tree, right? And there can only be one node that's the root of the tree or the one at the top. This, this node can have children, things that are underneath it that are attached to it, but it can't have something at the same level as it. And we don't want to make another sprite that's a child of this sprite because then they would be joined together, right? The, the child of this sprite would use its position and all that kind of stuff. But I want another unique sprite that is equivalent to this one, but I don't want to go and make a bunch more sprite scenes and, and duplicate my code and all that kind of stuff. Well, one of the powerful things about scenes, and remember a scene is just a collection of nodes. Our scene here just has this one node, but you could have a scene that could have you know multiple nodes in it. And those those nodes, together with any scripts that are attached to them, can be thought of and actually are an object. And if you've done object-oriented programming before, you know that that allows you to create multiple of the same object, to use that object as a definition for creating more and more objects of the same type. And that's what we're going to do with this sprite scene. I'm going to write some code to have Godot just spawn a bunch of these sprite scenes. Okay, so to do that, we're going to start by making another new scene. So I just click on scene, new scene. And to this scene, I'm going to add a node, and I'm just going to add the simplest node possible, just a node. Node, that's all I care about. I just want this. This is just a generic node. It has almost no properties at all, but it's just there to serve as the root of my scene. And I'm going to click on the name here, and I'm going to call this main. This is going to be my main scene. So if I save it, I'm going to save it with the name main. And then I'm going to hit not the play scene button, but I'm going to hit this button. This is to play the whole project. And when you click on this, it's going to say you haven't defined a main scene. Which scene is the one that starts when you start the project? So I'm going to say I want to do that right now. So I'm going to click select and I'm going to select the main scene for that. So now when I hit play and play the project, my main scene will open. And of course, there's nothing in here just yet. So now let's add a script to this. Right, so we're going to add a script. We're going to call it main.gd. That's fine. OK. As usual, let's remove our comments, and we're ready to start coding. OK, and in this script, we can have, just like in our sprite script, we could have things that we can have variables. We can have uh, things that happen when the scene comes into existence in the ready, and we could have the underscore process function do things every frame, any of that stuff. What we want to do is we want to have we want to have a reference to that sprite scene that's saved, the sprite.tscn. Okay. Now I could do this. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Let's call this, we'll just call this sprite. We want to load this sprite scene that's saved, this one over here is the file. We're going to use the preload function. Okay, and what the preload function does is it lets you name some resource. And this is the one we want. And so I could right click on this and choose copy path. And then if I go over here and hit paste, this is the path to that sprite scene file. And all the resources that you have in your in your Godot project are going to be listed like this 
starts out with res, which stands for resource. Uh, and just like a URL on the web, a colon, slash, slash, and then the path to the object. In a more complicated project, we might have lots and lots of files. So we're going to have, we would organize them into folders, and you would just, right, if you had a, a scenes folder, you know, you would put it like that. But this will be the, the well, this will load our scene and put it in this variable. Now the problem too that happens is that what order things happen in is important. And you want to make sure that if you do something in the ready function that it is actually that it's actually been loaded and is ready to go. And so we're going to put on ready here. And what on ready does that's going to ensure that this variable is ready and has been loaded off the disk when we're in the ready function and it's not going to give us an error because it hasn't gotten around to doing it yet. So in our ready function, we just want to spawn a bunch of these. And so to spawn one of these sprites, we would just say instance. Okay, and That's going to take this sprite scene and create an instance of it. And if I hit play, oh, we don't see anything. Why is that? Well. That's because we have created this sprite instance. So we've made one of these, but we need to add it to our tree. So we're going to say add child. And that, because we're running this on main, that's going to add it as a child of the main node. And when we hit play, now we have one sprite. And if you want to look, we can go over here to the debugger. You can actually see, if you look at the remote inspector, the remote inspector lets you look at the scenes and the nodes that are currently live, that are running right now. So if we look under here, we have there's our main node, and underneath of it is a sprite. And if I click on sprite, you can see, look at that, it says the position is changing and the rotation is changing as it runs around the screen. So now if we want to spawn more of these, we can just put this in a loop. So if I just say for i in range, let's just count to 10. And I'm going to put this in a loop. So we're just going to count to 10 and add a bunch of sprite nodes to the scene. And there you go, it just spawned 10 of them. And they're all going to do what they're supposed to do. And we can look real quick here just to show you what happens in the tree. Now, if we look at our tree, we can see we've got, make this a little bigger, we've got 10 sprite children. And Godot went ahead and auto named them because they all have to have unique names. But they're all, we can click on them and inspect them and see what they're all doing. And what's cool is, we can actually do that with quite a lot of them. All right, it'll work totally fine. And that's it. And as we get further into Godot development, that's how you're going to see we're going to do things like bullets and mobs and things like that, where you're just going to set up a scene that describes all the functionality of how any particular object in your game works. And then in whatever scene you want them to appear, you're just going to instance them as you need them, do various things with them, whatever you want to do. And that'll do it for this video. In the next one, we will start looking at some of the other node types and some of the things you can do with them. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.